Greetings, brethren. Well, it looks like Brian Denglinger made a response video. Well, a live stream, in a form of live stream, made a response in a form of live stream. A whole live stream dedicated to refuting me. Now, this was about the video I did on him. It was called Brian Dengler, the Money Grubber. Now, I do admit that the, the word choice is not exactly uh, the best, but uh, even Jesus himself called the Pharisees um, brood of vipers, white, white and suppakers, hypocrites. So, yeah. <laughs> but little old me, well, I now have 73 subscribers to his 38 point two thousand subscribers now i know <laughs> so I, I don't know i don't know whether whether to do this or not i'm not gonna i don't have enough energy to um go through the video and respond to every single thing but uh he he calls me a drunk and put down the bottle makes fun of the way I talk all throughout the video. And I'll just play. You know, yes, I would expect uh, before I put before I go into it. Yeah, I would expect if I put myself out there, if I, you know, do attack, I, I would expect, you know, some kickback from it. Yes, I, I take full responsibility for the the what I called him. Um for the things I assumed, yes, I probably was wrong on a couple things. But it's so, actually, it was just stuff I have observed from his own videos. And, you know, he complains, well, let, uh, let the video uh, play. And I'll explain it. Well, I wasn't doing that. I was just showing, using those videos as like kind of like a picture to show all these things, instead of just me coming on camera and making all these claims. So anyways, so all throughout the video, he calls me a drunk, put down the bottle, uh, makes fun of the way I talk. I'll, I'll explain the reason for that, but we'll show you here. This uh, Brian Deminger, the money grubber, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> not the best word choice. I'll admit that. This is not like Christ, but hey, it's what I deserved from your own videos. I mean, I don't know. Uh, October 30th, 2020. So this is just a few days ago. The Shepherd's Ambassador. I mean, the guy sounds like he's a little drunk or something in the video, but I guess I shouldn't judge that, you know, because being drunk, I guess, is fine. Um, being good. drunk is just fine. Um, yeah, I'll tell you about it uh, right, right up front because I know you guys won't uh, actually watch too much of this video. The reason why I talk like this or I fumble with my words because I'm actually uh, sick of uh, fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia. You know. I'm sorry I'm not as blessed as Brian Denglinger. I'm sorry. <laughs> Some people are sick. I have other problems too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Brian. I'm not as good as, I'm not as blessed. <laughs> you know, testimony of being a good Christian or something. But uh, just to show you the kind of uh, pathetic things people have to say about me and the lies that come out. And as an encouragement to you, to younger brethren, again, that's why the reason I'm going to do this video is to encourage, encourage younger brethren. When you get people lying about you, you think, wow, I can't believe they just said that. That's not even true. Um, <laughs> you'll see. Watch this. 49 views. So I'm going to be number 50, I guess, here. So congratulations to this guy. Uh, yeah.
this will be you'll see oh geez thanks geez thanks number 50 huh yeah well ever since uh ever since that attack gained 50 more and i gained what four subscribers that's something i don't know i'm not here to impress or the numbers or anything but uh yes yeah, so let's let's i'll show you the times he accuses me of being a drunk or a drunkard you know keep it proper Okay. This guy gives me a headache. Um, buddy, whoever, whatever your name is here, um, put the bottle down first of all. And fast food probably is more than likely. Um, and and you, you're having some attention span problems. You're clicking through a video. And what does this prove other than the fact that you have some problems? But, you know, please get saved, get born again. The Holy Spirit can straighten it out. Process of sanctification. You can actually have a real life. You know, um, again, I still have this. Yeah, I have problems. Yeah, I do. I have fibromyalgia. I can't help that. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I have problems too. I, I guess I make uh, some accusations. Some of the things that I have just heard. But a lot of it was the authorizations. That I got directly from watching you throughout the years. Um, probably at least since 2015, before 2015, probably around 2013, 14. I, I thought there was something wrong in 2015. I totally cut you off. Um, after um, church steeples are mind control devices i'm like what is that what is that <laughs> but anyways i'll just quick quickly um go through i'll show you one more place that you kind of just where is it I'm trying to remember yeah it's an old jeep, the newer one, night, or it's a truck, right? Okay. What you're showing there, it's a truck, okay? Oh, buddy, it's a, it's a truck. The one that you're, yeah, I called it a car. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a help belly too. Come from Pennsylvania, call it a car. It's an automobile, car, car, car. I don't know. Showing there, it's a truck, okay? Chevy Silverado. Yeah, I know it's a truck. I call it a car just because it's out of habit. No, it's a truck. Rest without a car. Oh man, put the bottle down, okay? Or, or you, know, and you say a bottle of alcohol? Well, bottle of alcohol, bottle of pharmaceutical pills, whatever you're on, you know? So, no, thank you. I don't want any. You know? Yes, I am on pharmaceutical pills. I know you don't believe in that, 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 that they're of the devil. I mean, I can't help it that I'm on it. You don't know, like Aaron, Aaron Darren. I'm not trying to make fun of his disease. I mean, his illness, his diabetes. That's very unfortunate. But you don't say nothing about that, I don't think. Not that I'm aware of. He takes medicine. So, um, yeah, so there's your proof of fibromyalgia, and I can't help it. You make fun of the way I talk, partly because um, the fatigue in fibromyalgia slows my mental ca capacity, you know, down a little bit, the, the way I speak. I make fun of the way I talk, and you just call me a drunk and um, put down the bottle. And uh, I'm not a drunk. 
I'll find my other. You, you don't say nothing to Aaron Darren. Oh, I don't know. Probably do. Knowing you, you probably do, but um, he, he gets by. He's allowed to. Um, I'm not going to go down through. I'm not going to hide anything. I'm going to put this the, the clip that you did about me on the end of this video because I'm only going to go here a couple more, like a minute, you know, showing things. And you can view it for yourself. You can go to his. And then if he doesn't keep it up, uh, keep the video on his page at the end of this video. Um, so, yes, I, I don't know. The, the, there's things that I've heard, you know, about the acres thing. I have no way of knowing. I really don't. Um, so... I take that, but I have no way of knowing. I didn't hear on your videos or anything like that. Um, but the other things I've heard on your videos, you have come around out right and said, said that. So if, and I, <clears throat> before I forget, yeah, you, you made a, a you um, was concerned that people will think, oh, I, I, I bought all these things like in a small amount of time, small, small period of time. Well, no, we all know, all, all of us know that uh, we've been watching for years. Um, maybe I should uh, like clarify for those who are just tuning in, but we, we have known this for years. You have shown this, this is over a period of years. And um, most of us know this. But anyways, before I ramble on anymore. Yeah, I, so I take full responsibility. Yes, I, I expect this. I expect this, that, that I'll get some feedback. But all day long, which <laughs> ever since you, you posted that. Um, I got attacked from his followers. And this was just recent, 40 minutes ago. Decided to post a, a, a book, <laughs> wrote a book for me. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna, I can't read that, all that right now. I really don't. You can come and read all this. Called me lost. Why? Because I disagree with Brian. I mean, there's there's video proof. If you disagree with Brian, you're lost. Oh, because I attacked him. Well, what where does that say in scripture? That you attack somebody or you ridicule somebody, and that means you weren't even saved to begin with. I don't know, but I reply, and I respond back to him. Now, how can you tell if I'm saved or not? Are you seeing this because you're agreeing with the comment above? My intent was not to show discord. I was giving my observation over the years that takes, and it seems like he's ripping you off. Now, how do you know I'm not saved? If I tell you I had conviction, repented, and believed, and the shed blood on the cross I atoned for my sins, I believe the death, burial, burial, and resurrection. I believe that Jesus Christ is God and is the Son of God. So if I told you that, am I saved? I thought Colossians 1.20 says, And having made peace through the blood on his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, I say, whether they th be things in earth or things in heaven. And Ephesians 1.13 says, In whom ye have also trusted, 
after that ye have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit a promise. Now, um, faithful servants of Christ um, chimed in, and I don't, I really don't like him say, saying all that, and I don't totally agree, but I couldn't control that. Um, so I get all this <laughs> over a, a, a 10 minute video. I made a 10 video of me. I made a um, 10 minute video on this. I get all this attack and you made like a, about like an hour or so long live stream on a 73, well now 73 subscriber to his 38.2 thousand subscribers. I'm just someone little. You can read this for yourself. Uh, they're not going nowhere. No, that's not it. Every one of your bank accounts are bigger than his. Shame on you. How, I respond back to him, how is my account bigger than his? The math doesn't add up. I think 51 cents is way less than whatever he has. And then there's a fraud. Seems like it to me. That's what it seems. Um, okay. Seems like uh, all his followers came to the rescue. I don't know. Not trying to be prideful, but this was just uh, all this. All this. I don't know. But all right. Thank you. Take care. On to the video here. Uh this uh, Brian Denlinger, the money grubber, okay? Uh, October 30th, 2020, so this is just a few days ago. The Shepherd's Ambassador, all right? The guy sounds like he's a little drunk or something in the video, but I guess I shouldn't judge that, you know, because being drunk, I guess, is fine. Uh, it's a good, you know, testimony of being a good Christian or something. But uh, just to show you the kind of, of pathetic things people have to say about me and the lies that come out. And as an encouragement to you, to younger brethren, again, that's why another you know, reason I'm going to do this video is to incur encourage younger brethren. When you get people lying about you and you think, oh, I can't believe they just said that. That's not even true. Um, you'll see. Watch this. 49 views. So I'm going to be number 50, I guess, here. So congratulations to this guy. Uh, yeah, this will be, you'll see. Hey guys, Brian Denlinger, the money grubber. Now this is his GoFundMe account. This is not the only uh, time that you raise money. 
I it probably was up to forty thousand dollars, I, I think, but it's down to thirty two. Okay, um, proof. It was up to forty thousand, but it's down to thirty two. Okay, uh, that's lie number one. Uh, it was never up to forty thousand. Okay, it stopped right there. I'll show you the proof here in just a couple minutes. And I'll, I'm going to do this again. And hey, these people, this circle of these these uh, you know bitter former viewers of mine, um, issue some apologies here because you've openly this guy here, this drunken guy is is openly lying about me. So continue. And you see in the picture, one of the things he bought was that uh, Hamlet. One of the things he bought to carry his books and stuff. <laughs> bought the ambulance behind him to carry his books and stuff. Um, no, I I bought a ambulance because it was it was the cheapest way. My wife still had things out at her parents' place in Iowa, and we had to go out and get them. So to rent a U-Haul would have been fairly expensive, and it, how would we have driven out or flown out or whatever else? And so we decided instead of a mobile home. We would get an old ambulance and fix it up, which we did. And uh, we bought that a few years ago. Okay, I think it was uh, 2018, early 2018. Um, I think it was maybe late 2017, early 2018 in that area there. Uh, paid a couple thousand dollars for it. It was not very expensive. Okay, uh, it's a 1999 older ambulance. All right, drove it across the country, did 4,000 mile trip, came back, saved money on motels, expenses, you know, things like that. Uh, it's been used as a work vehicle. I, I might have mentioned that I'm going to be using it to haul books from our property to the new office here, which I did because the thing can handle a lot of weight. Um, but, you know, again, they bought it to haul his books around and stuff haul my books around why would i haul books around on the road <laughs> okay so let's, let's continue uh, yeah. like two properties or at least more than two a whole bunch of anchors okay two properties at least more than two um yeah because uh over the course of six years people you know tend to move once in a while you know um, I mean, we came here in 2013 to buy property and bought property, and that was actually seven years ago. Um, and things change in seven years, okay? And when we buy properties, they're very cheap. Our entire net worth is less than $100,000, uh, okay? We don't have much money. I mean, you compare me to any other 45-year-old preacher out there, you're going to see that we live at a poverty level compared to what most people do. Uh, why? Well, because I want to show people you don't have to get into all kinds of debt. You can live debt free. Here's how to save money. But for me to preach those things, I have to do them myself first. I can't be a hypocrite with those things. That's why we live this way. So, yeah. Probably 60 at least. Some people say 168, somewhere around that neighborhood, 168 to whatever. And uh, okay, uh, talking about the the land that we own, I don't own 168 acres. Okay, I don't know where you're getting your information from, or somewhere around that, or maybe more than that, or you know, real exacting, real precise here, this guy. Um, and the amount of land and where I live and what food I eat and whatever, that's not anybody's business. Okay, I put out video, right? Unlike a lot of the guys out there who came before me, I don't just make video after video after, you know, DVDs and just sell them all and you, and then, you know, go after people with copyright stuff if you try to copy them. I've spent years bringing out preaching for free. If you don't like it, don't watch. I've always said that. It's easy, you know? I don't like this guy. I can't stand him. Go away, you know? Don't watch. You go to the store, you buy something that you don't like. You don't keep going back to the store, buying the same product and complaining to the store for selling the product. That's insanity. Well, I guess when you're partly drunk, I guess when you're making the video, well, anything makes sense. Um, 
but you know, I can see new people come along and they might hear some of these things and they'll say, I don't hear Brian talking about this. Well, you know, you have to go back through the years. Um, you know, I've been on YouTube since 2008. Uh, some of my older videos I deleted because it started out as a logging channel, if you didn't know that, um, just to bring new viewers up to speed with this. And the Lord convicted me. I started putting out preaching and teaching videos in 2009, then into 2010. I got more active in it and things. Got married in 2012 and um, met my wife late 2011. And then we've been going from there. So there's a lot of things. So, you know, these guys, what this, what this weirdo guy does, he takes uh, events from years ago, many years ago. And he says, he makes it look like I'm doing it all right now just to prove how corrupt I am. Um, I mean, how many people live at the same property for seven years uh, just or their whole life? Well, some people do. And OK, fine. That's a great situation. But in seven years, don't tell me a lot of people don't move multiple times. That's all that's going on here. But we'll continue. He has to like ride a four wheeler on to scout his properties. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ride a four wheeler around to scout all my vast lands, apparently. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, again, just to explain things, I, you know, I don't have to tell all this stuff, but I, I just, I like to, you know, I, I'm honest. I tell people about things. Um, when we lived at Bridgewater, the house that you're seeing behind me there in that little thing there, um, when we lived there, I had a property in the town of Littleton, Maine. Okay. It was going to be an off-grid property. It's the first property that we bought when we came to Maine. All right. I paid $18,000 for the property, $16,000 for the house. Pretty cheap. I don't think you're going to get many preachers that buy those kind of cheap, you know, lands. I didn't want to live in town. I didn't want to raise, you know, I didn't have a son at the time, but I didn't want to live in town. Okay. Well, we, Oliver was in the womb, but we didn't really know it because it was early on in her time of being with child. But. And so we bought this land. We're going to build on it, it but there was a right of way going back to it. it. Turned out our neighbor was a drunken Roman Catholic. It was his responsibility to keep the right of way open, and he always blocked it. So I always was being blocked from getting back into my land. It was a half mile off of the main road back to where my property started. The only way I get back in there because there was a, a, a river, you know, and you'll see it in the older videos. It's the, the lake looking river thing behind me in some of my older videos that I did back in the 2015, 2016, up and through there. And the only way to get back in there was a bridge. It was a just, it wasn't even really a good bridge. It was just culverts with dirt over top of it. And, um, and the beavers were always, you know, clogging these culverts and they'd blow out part of the, the dirt area. And then, and then you couldn't drive back through. And it was just a nightmare. So finally I just said, forget it. I'm just going to get, uh, a four-wheeler and um so i had a four-wheeler and i still have it but we bought a used one an older one it was a 2006 kawasaki brute force just being honest here bought the four-wheeler and we could get actually from our house in bridgewater that you see in the video there down to our property in littleton so i would ride on the atv trails and we could go back and forth which saved us money and you know, a lot of things there too. And then I was going back in, driving supplies back in to our property so I could start to build. And I built uh, uh, three different structures back there in the, over the couple years that we had it. And I was building a fourth, which would have been our home. And it would have been a 24 foot by 24 foot cabin near a spring that we had back at the property there. And um, at that time, our neighbor died and he put the place up for auction and went right before he died. He put a trailer on our right of way and really messed it up. I had to go see a lawyer about the whole thing. It was a, it was a terrible situation to go through. I mean, my son, he took his first some of his first steps back there on that property. There was a lot of things that we really loved about that place. But it was just going to be clear, you know, when this when the transaction happens, that new people come in and buy this property, we 
there's going to be things that's going to be almost grandfathered in that you know this new trailer on our right of way and if it's a bad person that buys it there they there's not going to be anything legally that i can do about it and i can't take people to court because the guy that did it went he is dead it was just it was terrible so we ended up selling the property bought another piece of land with the money that we made um i made a profit on the property obviously because i built you know three and a half buildings on it um tore down the one so technically technically it was two and a half but um so i built buildings on it you know and of course properties appreciate in value over time so i made some money on it um and we took that money and bought another property okay and you'll hear some things later on but just just to, to tell the story i don't mind telling the story i'm very honest about things i'm not trying to hide uh all kinds of secret stuff that we're doing um but see these people aren't honest they'll, they'll just lie about me and, and whatever else so and you know and we do have privacy okay so th there is that i'm not going to just say hey where we live just you know here and just tell everything about it there's sick people out there so that's not the only thing you bought you know You know, he raised it up for um, his new ministry headquarters. Well, here's one of his ministry headquarters. Over the day has finally arrived that we're going to make an announcement about the new ministry office and new ministry address. It, it, it was a trailer. It was a trailer that he bought. Store right here. Is the top secret new ministry office. So we're going to move off my mind to finally have all of our books back on the. I'm going to get back to deeper research now. Okay. This guy gives me a headache. Um, buddy, whoever, you're, whatever your name is here, um, put the bottle down, first of all, and the fast food probably is more than likely. Um, and and you, you're having some attention span problems here. Just clicking through a video and what does this prove other than the fact that you have some problems but, you know, please get saved get born again the holy spirit can straighten it out process of sanctification you can actually have a real life you know um again i still have this trailer okay what is this trailer let me i'll show you here in just a minute Okay, now you say, oh, look, how exclusive, how luxurious. It's almost like what Kenneth Copeland would have, you know, or something. Uh, you know what it is? Okay, it's a 53 foot uh, reefer trailer, old reefer trailer that I bought from a potato farmer in the area. He gave me a good deal on it because I didn't need the refrigerator unit that goes in the front there where those windows are. This area right in here, you can see I put in some old windows from a shed. Not even you know double triple pane windows whatever else um just single pane shed windows i stuck in the front of this where the reefer unit would have been the refrigerator unit would have been um there's dents in the walls right there the walls are wavy because it had a leak in the roof and when i bought it it still had a leaky roof and i had to climb up on top of the thing and, and fix the roof on it which i'm sure all my enemies they do that kind of thing too you know they're hard workers i don't know how to work but they do Okay, I mean, we're, we're, we try to do things as as cheaply as we can so we can advise other people, you know, it's, it's I just I see this stuff and I think you people don't even know me. I mean, my goodness. But, you know, this is the best that they can come up with. It's really kind of sad. But, yeah, it's what it is. It's a it's used to haul potatoes. And I put a plywood floor down and I, I put uh, linoleum, I laid linoleum, which I got used scraps and things from a from a martin's store here in northern maine uh you know i guess no expense was spared you know yeah there's a lot of uh uh you know other guys out there you know big false preachers apparently like i'm a false preacher that they they uh, put offices in reefer trailers too you know yeah 
Continue. I can't even stand to watch, let the video play or whatever, where I would have explained things and, you know. Oh, I didn't know about this. Solar power, bottom solar power, canoes. Um, again, it's solar power, canoes, um, no, if you actually watched it, I said that they are kayaks, bought from Kmart, all right, I mean, please get your research, get your facts straight, they were $150 a piece, and I bought them six years ago. We first came to Maine. One of our trips, we came up and we were staying. We didn't have any place to stay. So we stayed. The realtor at the time said, hey, go stay at a, at a there's a lodge down near the Drew's Lake. And um, and he said, go on down there. I know the guy. Well, I'll call him up and say, hey, you know, are your cabins? Do you have some cabins available? And the guy said, yeah, sure. And so we went down. We stayed at this lake. It was really neat. And I said, hey, you know what? We're here for a few days. Why don't we just we we're at Kmart? And we said, let's just get these kayaks and go out kayaking. My knife, my, my wife had never been kayaking before. But I guess I'm sinful for doing that, spending $300 so my wife and I could have a, a neat evening. And we've taken them things out many times. We were out. I did a sermon this year in one of those kayaks. But I guess that's that's wrong and sinful, and I'm just blowing money around and, and whatever else, you know. <laughs> yeah, can't even get it straight. And that solar power there I'm still using, by the way. And I should add this because this guy here doesn't know this, and of course he wouldn't. Um, that system that I had set up in that old reefer trailer, it didn't work because as the sun went down, when I originally built it where the solar panels were at, as the, you know, it got sunlight all throughout the day. But then as it goes to winter, the sun kind of goes down further. And then the front of the reefer trailer blocked the solar panels. So I had to redo my solar system to get more power. And then my computer wasn't working anymore to do video editing. So that's what happened there. The, the I still use the the trailer for holding books and things, um, but and ironically the, the kayaks are actually inside the reefer trailer now because we were getting mice living in the kayaks and that's not much fun when you go to take out your kayaks and mice come running out. Um, don't really want to take mice out on the lake, you know. But uh, so you know, people see it. Just ask me questions. People could ask me questions. I've given the offer and I'll give it, give it again to any of my enemies out there. Um, if you, you know, have some kind of an issue with me, write me a letter, just write me a letter and say, could you please address this? I believe you're wrong in this area or whatever else, but I guess it's, a, it's better to have a troll channel where you just continually waste all your time, you know, watching my videos, and just sitting there, you know, getting drunk or eating fast food or whatever else. And, you know, I rip on the thing of eating fast food because I used to be a fast food junkie myself and it led to very poor health. And now I'm out of that phase of my life and I know the good health and I'm trying to wake people up because I care about people. So let's continue. Um, what else? Ministry headquarters. I else? Let us see. We can find it. We 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 have a joke, ongoing joke with our son Oliver. We'll we'll talk about you know, um, uh, cell phone zombies because you see these people walking down the street and they're just going, <laughs> they're walking, not even looking where they're going. There's a, uh, 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 you know, uh, there's one in action here. Just you know. Go down through all the videos against Brian Denlinger and, and of course, Brian's videos as well. You know, uh, 
sad, really sad. Wonder if this is the same exact thing, just unfinished. I don't know, but this is a somewhere that you managed to create headquarters. I know well, that's actually our tiny house. Which I'm sure that you all my enemies out there would live in a tiny house, you know. To save money and things, of course. Sure. I don't know. It's one of the like finished ones that you had. I don't know if it was the trailer or not. But one of the headquarters that he has, and he starts with that. Oh, there's the. I'm glad that I found this. This is a bus that you trying to convert into a ministry headquarters. <laughs> this is his bus that he's trying to convert into his ministry headquarters. Can you prove that again? Where did I ever say it's a ministry headquarters? It's not a ministry headquarters. Um, Again, in an effort to try and save money, to try and teach people how to live debt free, how to live cheap. If you're drowning in debt, here's how you can get away from that whole system. Here's how you can live a, a cheap life. We bought a old school bus. Okay. And I'll even shock you. We bought two old school buses. When we first bought our property in 2017, I bought a school bus that was not running. From a garage, Wester Dolls in Littleton, Maine, to be very specific, not far from where our first property was that we bought when we first came to Maine. And I bought a, an old school bus retired from the local school district here for two thousand dollars. Okay, the, the guy used the guy that owned the garage had to use his wrecker, a big tow truck looking thing, and he pulled the the school bus the whole way down to our property, backed it in to our onto our land. And then we use it for storage. Okay. That's, I, I know it's extravagant. You know, I'm sure Kenneth Copeland has school buses on his property. You know? And Benny Hinn and all the other big charismatic, uh, you know, prosperity gospel guys. I'm sure they have school buses littering their properties because, you know, that's what we, we uh, prosperity preachers do to show our wealth. You know, old school buses. And so then this one, I went back to the same garage. He had another one. And I said, I was thinking about this idea, which I'll tell you here in a minute, which is in, I think it was in the off grid channel that I had for a little bit of time. But um, I went back and he had this one. It ran and I actually drove it down myself from Littleton down to where our land is. And about an hour, 15 minutes drive, driving this old school bus. Oliver sitting in the thing and uh, he was having a, the time of his life, you know, but anyways, we drove down in the winter and uh, ended up, you know, I backed it into place and whatever else uh, went in, took out all the seats. I did it on both buses. It was a terrible job because they rust so bad up here because of the stuff they put on the roads. The bolts don't come off the seats. So you got to grind the heads of the bolts off. And, oh, man. But <laughs> It's a lot of work, in other words. Gutted the whole bus out, um, you know, took apart the wiring, drained the tank, did all kinds of work on the bus. And then I built shelving, you can see right behind me there, and that little metal thing just in the corner. Um, I don't know if it was mounted there or not, but it's a, gr it's a grain slash nut mill. You can make your own peanut butter with by hand. We make our own peanut butter. Um, we do a lot of things for ourselves. Uh, that's why I'm very busy and I a lot of times don't have time to get back to people right away because we have a lot going. But we've created it as a summer kitchen. It has a wood cook stove in it. We cook throughout the summer months in our old school bus. It's not a ministry office. Okay. Not what it's for. So, but these guys on YouTube, man, they know everything. They, they just know it all about me. 
It's incredible. Like I said, I mean, this stuff's entertainment for me. It's just, it's great. I was showing my wife some of this, and she's just cracking up, and she just said, what a weird hell. You know? So I bought a bus, ambulance, um, Two trailer. Buses. They converted. And that, there's his bus. He said, oh, it's just old bus. No, it's where he was trying to find a new headquarters. Well, there's the bus. Glad I found that one. Yeah. Um, and he preaches about not having a church building, but has a Ministry office. If you have a church building, it's satanic and wicked. You're lost. You're a Jesuit. No. Uh, when did I say that? When did I say that? Just lied again. These guys seem to have a thing for lying. They're the ones that are genuinely saved. I'm lost, but they just lie. You know, you're a Jesuit if you have a church building. You're satanic. You're lost. Uh, when did I ever say that? I've never said that ever if you're defending church buildings after going there you know if i would condemn people that had church buildings i'd be condemning myself i used to be a fanatic for church buildings when i was saved early on before the lord really showed me the truth i've never said that people that have ever gone to a church building are lost or jesuits or you know whatever i never said that people that defend them after knowing the truth and hearing the truth and refusing to repent um, yeah, I have to question their salvation. I say, I don't understand why they are defending this after they know the truth. After they know the truth. Okay. You know, maybe you can play that back if you're one of these devils that stalks this ministry and play it and, you know, real slow so you can get it, you know. Everything else. Anyways, that might be the same place. Yeah, that's the same place. Never mind. Um, let's see. Without so being happy with that trailer that he converted, it all finished up. You know, that trailer, I think he, uh, if I remember correctly, he finished that all up and everything. And finally got it done. That's what you see in the last one. Now he has a house, too. Another house. The donations made it. You bought him a house. Another house that you did not need oh. to make. A whole house to make into a. Uh, a whole house to make into a thing. Is, oh, man. Oh, my goodness. Buddy, get some help, okay? You got some major issues. Um, it's an international ministry. Where do we run an international ministry from? You know, crazy. I mean, you know, okay, it's this is not a church building. Well, thankfully. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, how do I run an international ministry? We contact people. We have people, you know, like I've shown, just, you know, Right here. I mean, this right here, these are letters we've gotten in the last month and more all the time. You know, hopefully you can see that. Looking over here on my screen here. Um, you know, we are in contact with thousands of people, but I'm just supposed to not have anything, I guess, you know, if I was really a legitimate, um, you know, minister i guess i'd have to live in a hole in the ground or you know if i had a mortgaged house and a mortgage church building then i'd be real i guess uh let's continue headquarters i wish i had a house of my own well maybe you would if you weren't such a loser on youtube just you know stalking a guy like myself maybe if you actually became a man and got out of the house occasionally you know not went for 
beer and, and fast food, maybe you ought to just get out and, you know, try to do something with your life. Maybe you should give it to me. Oh, yeah, maybe if you give it to me. Well, uh, why would I want a drunk in my house? No, I don't think so. Work, you know, work. Because I'm poor. I really am. Yeah, <laughs> really am. Um, see. Uh, here's, your, here's a classic one, too. Watch this. Where else did you buy them? A new Jeep. A new Jeep. Oh my goodness. A new Jeep. Um, we bought a 19 year old Jeep Cherokee. They don't even make them anymore. The XJs. Okay. The newer ones, a new, uh, uh, you know, classification. Whatever. It's an old Jeep. 19 year old vehicle. New Jeep. 90 plus thousand miles on it. And, uh, you know, that's new. Wow. Really? Brand new. Yes, sir. 19 year old, uh, brand new Jeep. $6,000 Jeep. Jeep to me. You right. Better than mine. He complains about, like, uh, oh, this has dings and stuff. Yeah, that, that's a rusted uh, car, you know. Uh, oh, buddy, it's a, it's a truck. The one that you're showing there, it's a truck, okay? Chevy Silverado, it's a truck. Rest of our car. Oh, man, put the bottle down, okay? Or, or you know, And you say a bottle of alcohol? Well, bottle of alcohol, bo bottle of pharmaceutical pills, whatever you're on, you know. No, thank you. I don't want any. You know, just, but, you know, just laugh at this stuff, okay? It's just ridiculous. You know, don't don't be offended by this. By the way, you see people like this attacking me. I laugh at this stuff. Okay, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I know when I get attacked. I've been attacked really bad different times, and uh, had some pretty high powerful people attack me. I mean, we've gotten letters from the Vatican. Okay, um, I do mean people working at the Vatican too. I'm not joking. Uh, this stuff, you know, don't let it bother you. Let's continue. So what? So what? You see in the background? That's his vehicle that he runs. That Jeep. The Jeep. Huh. It's a Chevy Tracker. The little white thing there. It's a Chevy Tracker. 2003, I think. 2004 Chevy Tracker. It's got 160,000 miles on it. The transmission's going out. Uh, it didn't pass inspection this year. And my truck didn't pass inspection this year. So I lost two vehicles this year as a result of the bad rust on the roads up here. Or the bad rust, yeah. The stuff that they put on the roads up here to melt the snow. Six months out of the year, we're getting, you know, our vehicles destroyed. Um, so, yeah, I lost two vehicles this year. They're no longer inspectable. They still run somewhat. Uh, but, yeah, just, again, to, to let you support this ministry you can see where the money is is going here okay i don't buy new vehicles i mean right now my two old vehicles that i have my truck i'm going to try to get it through this winter as a plow truck it has a plow bracket thing on the front it's not even a real great plow i put it on myself but it's a push plow type of a thing i'm going to try to get it through this winter and plow as much as i can um We'll see if it makes it through the winter. Uh, it, it actually, the motor is pretty good, um, but the thing is just falling apart. I mean, the, the rust is just terrible on the truck. Uh, the Chevy Tracker, uh, when it starts to get cold, you know, the, the, the transmission fluid gets a little bit, you know, heavier, a little thicker, and it, it'll, you know, I'll go to drive it, and it'll just, all of a sudden, it'll slip out of gear, and then it'll go back into gear again, and it's not real good. So probably it's going to let us sit sometime, but we drive it as much as we can um, just around our property and things. It's no longer inspected. So, but I buy a Jeep, a 19-year-old Jeep, and I'm just 
being frivolous with the Lord's money. Um, you know, and, and there is a level of accountability that I have to the body of Christ. That's why I'm open and honest about this stuff. You know, my private property where I live. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. It's private. I don't want people, you know, coming and taking pictures or just walking onto my land or whatever else. No, it's a private place. Okay. But yeah, I'll be honest about some of this stuff, but you know, good night. Here we go. Continue. Still runs that. So I can't use that. Yeah, yeah, and, and just look at the, look at this, you know, his searches. I mean, right there again, this, this foul thing that people use with my last name. These are saved people and they'll make a, they'll turn Denlinger into this down here. They're saved, you know, and the, Anderson's cult does this. A lot of these people, Robert Breaker's cult does this too. They'll, they'll make, you know, filthy things about my last name, but these are saved people, you know, but just look at the, look at the searches. Brian Denlinger, Brian Denlinger, Brian Denlinger, Brian Denlinger. And, and Sam Salween down here, whatever I like to call him, the, the Trinity guy. But people are obsessed. Um, let's see. All his books. See, there's all his books and stuff. That's his new house. That's he has tons and tons of books. That's what the uh, the donations went to too. <laughs> well, well, the donations went to. Okay, let's look at the picture here. This King James sixteen eleven right here was given to me. This one here, a pastor gave me that one. That's the RV, revised version, um, authorized version, parallel Bible from the late 1800s, given to me by a pastor. This one was given to me by another friend of the ministry, the 1769 King James Bible. This old Bible here is 18, I can't remember, the 1840s or something like that it goes back to. Uh, pastor Guy Mosebrook, Liberty Baptist Church, gave me that Bible, given to me. Um, a lot of these Bibles behind my head here were sent to me by people saying, if you know somebody that you can give one to, and I do give people Bibles and things. So um, these two books up here are Islamic books that were given to me. I actually had a Muslim give me all these different colored books right here. A sister in the Lord gave me these history on the Jewish people books right here. A lot of these books were given and sent. But, you know, again, I'm in international ministry. Uh, shouldn't I have some books? You know, uh, probably a good idea to have a few books if you're in international ministry. Just a thought. Let's continue. And says four wheeler. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, what else? Let's see. Well, anyways. So he's just sitting on this money. Actually, is so. He's just sitting on this money. Actually, is. <laughs> I mean, you know. Oh, man, just continue here. I'm going to answer this thing here because that's funny. I mean, got his ministry office, about like probably this is his third office, probably. <laughs> he completed that trailer one, and uh, so this is the second. Well, yeah, he got his house, his regular house, his new house, uh, that trailer he converted. I think that's what that one. Uh, is with all the wood is with all the 
wood paneling, like, uh, you know, uh, like a Western kind of feel to it. So Western kind of feel. I, I, I decorate my offices in, in themes, apparently. <laughs> Western kind of feel. It's tongue and groove pine, which I built myself. Um, yeah. Okay. Continue here. So he has three offices and I am what's it's a bus. Uh, I've moved, uh, you know, different times over the last six years. And open and honest about all of it. But see, they make it look like I'm just doing this all right now. Just, just, oh man, I must be making millions of dollars. Yeah. Okay. Uh, three cards. Um, Two of which aren't inspectable anymore. And you forgot my ambulance. Oh, I pulled over on you there, you know. Uh, yeah. My old ambulance that needs work and things. So, yeah. Well, a car and one that you just bought of a truck that you're on the around, just a, a, a beater. Um, no, it's not inspectable anymore. It's not inspectable. I can't just run it around. I, I don't even want to drive the thing on the road. I use it for doing, you know, firewood and trimming things on my property and plowing. And that's it. Okay. The the bed and the cab where it meets is twisted. I showed that in my video, but he didn't want to show that part. So. Ambulance, the bus, a um, couple properties, Brian Dingler, the, the money grabbing, sitting on $32,000. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, let me explain to you there. Um, I'm sitting on 32000 No, uh, that's showing how much we raised since 2018 for the project of getting a new ministry office. Okay, uh, let me just show you here really quickly. This is the original page still there. Okay, 32738 raised a $40,000 goal. We never reached the goal of $40,000. Okay, the Lord provided us with a place that was 30,000 where I'm now sitting, and it took us years to be able to get that property. Okay, the whole time I'm putting out, you know, videos and things like that for free, not charging anybody anything for the videos. It's an online ministry reaching thousands of people. You know, show me another one that's doing the work that we do for and, and the, on the same budget. There aren't any. Okay, but let's see what happens if you push donate donate now. Donations paused. Our team has contacted the organizer with a solution and donations will resume once the issue is resolved. Okay, you say what's the contact? Right here it is. In my personal email account, Friday, September 18th of 2020, 1001 AM. I'm not going to show the emails from them or me, whatever. Hello, this is a reminder that starting September 30th, 2020, your current fundraiser will no longer be able to accept new donations. If you have already submitted a request or are okay with no longer accepting donations after September 30th, 2020, no need to take any further action, which is exactly what I did. I didn't take any further or I didn't do anything else and, and try to tell them and keep the thing going. So the GoFundMe thing ended. For some reason, they still have the page up, but it's over. You can't give to that anymore. Okay. Which I showed the proof there. It's paused. It doesn't work anymore. All right. Oh, but look at it. He's sitting on $32,738. Uh, no. Uh, they send you the money every month. So if one month you raise $200, if one next month you raise, raise $1,200 or whatever else, they send that money to you. There's no GoFundMe bank out there that has $32,738 that they're going to give me when I ask for it. Okay, they send it to you every month. So uh, this Rocks for Brains guy here that made this video is openly lying. First, at the very beginning, he said that we raised 40,000. Now it's back down to 32,000. No proof. We didn't, we never raised $40,000. Sorry, it didn't happen. Um, but secondly, they actually send it to you in small increments as it's raised. So we saved up our money and kept praying that the Lord would provide a place. And he has. 
and the ministry goes forward. That's what these devils don't like. They don't like the fact that God is actually blessing this ministry and God is actually using this ministry. That's what they don't like. Let's continue. So you, you so we lie about um he him giving you having people give to him sitting on thirty two thousand dollars. We lie. Yes, I just proved that you did. I'm not sitting on thirty two thousand dollars. There is no money coming to me from GoFundMe anymore. But all this stuff, and we lie about that he. He's not just living off of you. He's buying all this stuff. Normal expenses over the course of six years since we've officially moved to Maine. Seven years if you want to go back to when we first bought property. We moved in 2014, January of 2014. So we're approaching, you know, seven years of living here, but definitely, you know, seven years of, of owning property in Maine. He has cameras and stuff like that. Yeah, like that's the further ministry, but that's not the ministry to, to, to buy houses and other things. You do it in in your uh, one of your rooms in your house. That's what you should should have done. Which we did for years and years at Bridgewater. Are you going to turn that new house into like a house church? I don't think. I think it's a new office. So, how's your books? <laughs> so he's making any noise. <laughs> this cracks me up. Sorry. Um, are, you, are we going to turn this into a house church? Uh, well, we will meet with people here, but um, this is this is a ministry office. Okay. Um, I, I don't have a problem, you know, uh, meeting with people. Certainly not. I mean, I literally, uh, I, I meet neighbors, you know, people walking the, the street up here. I've witnessed the people right out here in front of the place. And we have a lot of work to do right now, but eventually there's going to be signs, gospel signs on the property here. People telling people how to get saved and, and whatever. And word's been spreading around the town here that, hey, there's a preacher moved in. You know, and, and I'm getting a lot of people and they say, um, so what do you do for a living? I say, well, I'm a preacher, King James Video Ministries. Oh, and they look around and they'll go, where's your church at? <laughs> uh, well, we worship at home. And like the Bible says in the New Testament, people worshiped in their homes. And the church is not some building that you go to. And, and, and I get the, oh, OK, you know, and this uncomfortable look that I've dealt with for many years. Um, we've had some real good conversations with local people here. Um, had some great opportunities to witness. Looking forward to more of it as time goes by. I'm not afraid of people. I like to talk to people. Okay, we're not hermits. We don't live in the middle of nowhere and, and uh, you know, run away from people or something like that. Uh, we live in a very remote area, yes, but we like to talk to people. We like to witness to people. But uh, I, I'm not going to be putting cameras in people's faces to, to make dramatic moments so I can get a lot of views on YouTube. You know, it's just, it's, it's weird. These, these people, they just, they know so much about me. It's just, that's the thing. It's always impressed me about this, but continue. So he has three ministry offices, a ambulance, a bus, trailer, two houses, uh, two or three properties with acres upon acres of land and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh. Welcome. No, uh, you know, Brian Dengler, the money grabber. Well, I hope you're happy with all of this. Okay, see ya. Yeah, uh, so that's it. Um, Brian Denlinger, the money grabber. I hope you're happy. Um, well, yes, I do have joy in Jesus Christ and my salvation. Um, I do have joy in knowing that I've helped a lot of people. Um, I've met a lot of really neat people over the years and I've been there for people. So, yes, I, I am actually, I do have a lot of joy. I'm happy as well. So, thank you. I'm glad that you, I hope 
then I'm happy. I am. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, you know, seeing, you know, it was torture. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> but, so, uh, yeah, I get back to just a little time of fellowship with everybody here. Just some question and answer time, I guess. So, uh, so, um, yeah, but you know, hey, anybody, if you have questions seriously about what we do, what, how we live, whatever else, you know, um, he's wearing his mask. He might be, you know, don't want to get baloney virus. Um, but, <laughs> oh man, that, that's one of the best ones I've heard. Um, I, I saw another one the one time uh, people were having a conversation. Oh, I forgot to do the one thing. Let me let me just um, no, that's not the one. Ah, oh, well, I won't bother. But I, I read the comments sometimes. Some some of these things, you know, um, I just go because pe again, people link me to stuff. They say, hey, check this out, or or you know, some of the brave followers of these people, they'll they'll post links, you know. You need to watch this if you believe in Denlinger. Or not. And I'll think, okay, what's this? And I'll click on a link and I'll look at it a little bit. No, brother. You know, it's one of these. And, and you know, what am I going to do? Just, oh, well, they they have a right to post nonsense on, you know, stupid nonsense to try to destroy my ministry. Uh, no, I delete it. And I block them from the channel. I don't have time to waste with trolls. You know, um, just that simple. I remember going to a Baptist church the one time where I was sort of, you know, acting as assistant pastor, um, the last one I went to, and I preached for the pastor there and preached many times in the pulpit. There's old videos of me preaching there. I posted on my channel. And this charismatic guy came the one night, and he was in all kinds of weird heresy. And, of course, you can lose your salvation, he was saying. And it got rather heated, and I was arguing with the guy and whatever else, and and, you know, I mean, it, it, if he would have said, I'm going to stay here, whatever, I'll just say, out, get out the door. Uh, I'm not, you don't let wolves into the congregation. You don't let people come in that are bad. You know, people coming in and having disagreements is fine. But when you get people that are just trying to destroy ministry, you kick them out. That's what the Bible says to do. Uh, and then, I, and then you know, they'll lie about you and whatever else. Evil report. That's just there. But um you know, I, I've tried to do my best, and uh, and YouTube is a terrible place. Well, let's just be honest. YouTube is an awful place to try to do ministry. <laughs> um, again, you know, it's it's not my fault for being on YouTube. It's all of you out there. I'll blame you people because you have so many good questions. You know, and I'm too dumb to quit. You know, I just I people ask me questions. I say, yeah, I don't have a sermon on that. That's a really good question. I probably should do a sermon on that and a sermon is created and then and then you know the Lord will give me some things and my wife does research as well and she'll you know she'll find things the Lord shows her things and and then and away we go and here I am all these years later and uh, you know you say well you know um, if this work of this council be of men it will come to naught well YouTube is a, is of men I'm in a public forum here it's not my website um, will it come to naught? Yeah, it will. Um, eventually, there won't be any Bible believers on YouTube. You know, uh, Robert Faker Breaker and Gene uh, Clickbait Kim, uh, those guys are monetized channels. And so there'll be big shots on YouTube probably from now till the Antichrist shows up and they start worshiping him. Um, whatever. You know, they're, they're monetized. They're getting paid. They're not being persecuted by anybody. You know, the atheist websites out there like Rational Wiki, they're not even attacking Robert Brake or Gene Kim. They don't even say anything. And those guys got hundreds of thousands of subscribers. You know, just, you know, I don't want hundreds of thousands of subscribers. I don't want monetization coming from YouTube. That's not the point. The point is, you know, ways that you can tell who's legitimate. Um, how many enemies do they have? Okay. I mean, you hear testimony. That's great. Here, a preacher, what's their testimony? All right. Um, if you haven't heard mine, you can watch my video where I go through the, the story of Brian Dellinger, who, how I got saved. But 
just very quickly, I was raised in going to church buildings. Um, false profession of faith when I was a boy in Sunday school because it was pressured. And uh, I didn't want to feel stupid. So I raised my hand that I wanted to be saved. And I went out in the hall and prayed the prayer. Had no idea what I was doing. Um, I loved the Lord. I, 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 I really sincerely did. I believed the Bible. And I did believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sins. But I didn't understand what sin really was or anything else. I was a boy, little little boy, taken advantage of in, in Sunday school by a, a zealous teacher that wanted to get converts. And so she could come and say, we had, you know, 12 children saved in Sunday school today. And, you know, so I fell for it and I thought, Hey, I'm a Christian. This is great. I go to church and my parents are teaching Sunday school and everything else in the church. We're a Christian family, even though we went to public school and we, you know, watched television and there was no conviction of that and rock music and, and the whole thing, but we were Christians. And, uh, Years later, I got into the art world. I got into logging, and um, I just got to a point where I was just miserable. I had no reason to live. Um, actually, was about ready to kill myself. Uh, I was very suicidal at the time and very deep depression. And I came to a point where I just walked outside of my um, art studio one night, and I just looked up at the sky, and I said, God, I know you're real. I know you're real and I just don't know what what is the point of life and I just want you to give me wisdom I had no idea about James chapter 1 if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally up liberally and upbraideth not I had no idea I couldn't have quoted that to save my life but I came to a point where I was broken and the Lord started to show me truth I didn't get saved right then when I called out to the Lord but he showed me truth and truth and I started to realize I'm not a Christian. I'm not saved. Um, I'm not born again. There's no way. I, I, I can't say I'd go to heaven right now if I died. And I got down on my knees for the first time, totally broken and just said, God, I want to I, I need to be saved. Please save me. Um, I'm tired of this world. I'm tired of my life. I, I'm scared and I'm going to stay here on my knees until I know that I'm saved. And Please, God, save me. I believe that Jesus died on the cross, was buried, rose again. Um, according to the scriptures, I, I believe that. I see it now. I, I used to make fun of the Bible as a saved you know, Christian in my teenage years. I used to make fun of the King James Bible. And I wasn't making fun anymore. And uh, the Lord saved me. And uh, then just saved me, you know, called me into the ministry, which really still blows my mind. But that's my story basically my testimony. So you, you look at a, a preacher, you look at his testimony. Then you look at the Bible that he uses. Uh, my King James Bible. Oh, there it is. Look at the Bible that he uses. The Holy Spirit will not lead a man to use a new version. Okay. Uh, not happening. Some guy that uses a new version, he might be ignorant of the issue and, you know, later on become a Bible believing Christian once he's straightened out on the facts. But the Holy Spirit will not lead a man to preach for 5, 10, 20 years out of a new version. Not happening. This is God's book for English-speaking people. And then you look at his doctrine after that. And then you look at the fruit that he produces. And um, I've been examined by so many different people over the years. This ministry has been critiqued and criticized almost like no other ministry out there. And we're still here. And the Lord still blesses. us. And you get a blessing out of watching the videos. And that's all there is to say about that.